have to narrate this because no normal person would be able to understand what's going on if I didn't, so. Prologue. Wherever the Red Scales are hanging out, I don't know. The Red Scales and Ara are going about their business, doing Red Scale things. They do not notice Ixara lurking in the background menacingly. Thanks to futuristicwish.com, I can finally teach my stupid brother and his friends a lesson. Ha <laughs> I'm a lesbian. Ixara reveals the baby gun. With this gun, I'll turn the Red Scales into babies. That way, the Star Cyclers will see Xanthar for what he really is, a drooling infant. Meanwhile, Xanthar is talking with the rest of the Red Scales. I just finished paying my taxes. You would pay your taxes. I'm a functioning adult? Not for long. <laughs> Ixara points and fires the baby gun. The red scales become baby. <coughs> Yeast is also currently walking by. Baby Kraken runs up and grabs him. They even have a group cat? <laughs> Cringe. She shoots Yeast for good measure. He becomes a kitten. An adorable kitten. Mew. Ixara starts to walk away triumphantly, but it fumbles with the gun. It falls to the ground and conveniently fires at her. <laughs> there is a prolonged shot of just all the guys as babies, just sitting there, until a random bystander shows up. Who left all these babies here? Scene one, setting. I don't know, you guys figure it out. Moray's tub. Help me, Xanther. I'm drowning. Uh, you realize you can swim, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know a lot of things. I don't know how I came to be. I don't know why I exist. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. I am but a wee hatchling, Xanther. I cannot fathom my existence just yet. Okay, you're way too philosophical. Have some of this. Baby Zenthar offers Baby Mori a delicious salted cracker. I'm assuming they have teeth at this stage so they can actually chew it, but if not, the salt still enters Mori's system through his mouth, causing an adverse medical reaction. Not really, Mori just spazzes a bit. Spazzing noises. Duh, you friend. Me like you. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Just the right amount of dumb for this age. Let's go see what our companions are doing now. But the dumb never progress past hatchlinghood. He's still our lovable little goof. Anyways, they get out of the tub, cut to the music room. I play the xylophone! Ooh. Yes? Are you impressed? No. It appears as if Fidet has caused some emotional disturbance within my peers. This must be a sign of distress, and I do not know if I should begin comforting said child or not. Brother, may you please assist? Uh, excuse me, it seems I've filled my diaper. Kraken plays with the sword. The Red Scales try to reenact Shrek 2 from memory for Ara's birthday, or something, I don't know. Scene 2, the wild, wild west. An old frog is playing a banjo while looking out at the majestic landscape of the wild west. He is narrated Kalahongi Sing. I've been a drifter all my life. Drifting out of people's lives, always feeling the need to run because you can't stand the sound of another heartbeat in the room. I've journeyed from the bayou to El Paso. I fell in love once with a senorita named Rosetta. Had a few yarns, left them as tadpoles. I fought in many wars, smuggled drugs, shot a man in Reno. Yes siree, I've seen it all. But I ain't never seen nothing like the one called Kraken. 
It was the hottest week of the summer in El Paso. I had come there after meeting God on the coast. I was hoping to find my like-minded brethren in the monastery of St. Juan Diego. <laughs> Little did I know, I'd end up finding the devil. The devil doesn't have horns or a tail. The devil doesn't have wings or even a goatee. No. No. The devil is a three-year-old with shiny blonde hair and bright blue eyes. I had just rolled into town. I stopped at the cantina so my horse could get some rest. When I walked in, I came to find the most peculiar of sights. A bunch of beefy, fruity men gathered around a very dead horse. Joseph. Oh my god. Kakiawan. What kind of stand could have caused this? Avdol. Must be a really powerful one. Close target if I had to guess. Ulnarov. Oh my gosh, it must be due. No. I don't know what Jins are talking about stands, but I can tell you what happened here. May I please get some water? I am severely parched. Shut up! I'm talking! Oh. Pianist! Piano me! Piano starts playing Bartender by Lana Del Rey. It was a day just like any other. And then... <laughs> you ever seen Boss Baby? Staring Alec Baldwin. Yes. No. Neither have I, but there was this weird child that came in and just dragged in this horse. I don't know what happened to the horse before then, I'm just really impressed that kid was able to drag in a horse that big. Kid was dummy swole. Probably an orphan. Always having to defend itself. Learning how to be its own parent. The only morals it learned were the laws of nature and how to survive. What a pitiful soul. A woman screams. Door slams open. Shiver me timbers! Hit me the baby! Three-year-old Kraken struts in, sits at bar stool, pulls up bar stool, sits at bar stool. I have the leche. Oh my god, I fucking hate baby talk. I refuse. I'll have the leche. Hands milk. Mean people throw bar stool out from under Kraken. They laugh. She shoots them. They are dead. Joseph. Oh my god. Milk drinkers will not be disrespected. Polnareff. I want that. The end. We fade out from the scene and back to Kraken playing with a sword. The camera slowly zooms out from Kraken's face as she waves the sword in the air, babbling excitedly all the while. Was it a flashback? Merely a daydream? The world may never know. Kraken is interrupted by a small, extremely deep meow. The squad turn their heads in unison to the source of the noise. It's Yeast, here a small kitten, still with his same voice, stumbling into the scene. He face plants, tripping over his own clumsy kitten feet. Oh god, why have you forsaken me, in this my hour of need? <laughs> Exara bites Zenthar for literally no reason. When the Lord spoke, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I do not think he meant this. Vedette tugs on East tail. He hisses and bats at her with his paw. Truly this cannot be the Lord's kingdom. We pan over to the old toad, who's still goddamn here for some reason. You see that there's the curse of faith. You think for years and years about what comes after you kick the old bucket. And you round that bend in the road and find out you've been wrong the whole time. Hell ain't all fire and brimstone. Sometimes hell is a personal torture. Custom made for all your worst fears and annoyances. Scene 3. Moray's Tub. My buddy senses. They're tingling. Quick gang to the Aquamobile. The babes crawl their way to an actual car at a painfully slow pace. This whole segment takes about 30 seconds, and the point of it is to test if people are actually invested or not. There's no music or anything, just the occasional floor-hitting noise as these babies fumble their way over to the car, which they are far too young to drive. Would you guys like some pretty anime music? Greater than WS10? Yeah. Perhaps. I would love nothing more. A rizzle drizzle my home sizzle from the hizzle. Okay, fuck this. I don't know what's going on.
And so, our heroes jam to some of the greatest J-pop hits of the century. J-pop hits like Hasu Miku, Johnny Cash, and everyone's favorite fresh beat band from Nickelodeon. Until next time, I'm Alec Baldwin, and if your name is Kevin, here's a freebie for you. Hi, Kevin can't come to the phone right now. He's got in a Pokemon battle with me, Alec Baldwin. Got to get those gym badges, Kevin. There you go, Kevin. Have a great noise with your day and a happy new year. Yes, I stole the George Dickey joke from community. Them babies jump in the air into a Shrek 2 freeze frame. Credits roll. This was a mistake. Seems as though your pony is a one trick fuck. Is it a real theory though, or is it one of your Xenathar has mommy issues theories? Your home planet doesn't have zoos, yes? I read all about the ice dome. The way some zoos are run would produce too much excess heat under the planet's environmental guidelines. I love ours so much! <laughs> oh. Don't have you really, really. Oh my god! A bug! Shut the hell up, bitch. Go kill yourself. You're fat. You're ugly. <laughs> My brain is rock hard right now. I am so smart. I've got a rock hard brain. <laughs> Better out than in, I always say. Right, Fiona? <laughs> what accent are you trying to do? I don't know. I know Baby Grumpy Dragon doesn't say fuck. But if Mori doesn't stop shitting on me with that 96... I just might! I've never been on one of these. Give me a smoochy. Smooch. They smooch. Gah! Ugh. You know, like an anime. Nani! Ugh. <laughs> stop, you gotta stop. Randy asks East, who's a good kitty, Uwu? I hate everything. Randy, I hate you so much. You are the worst person for making me read that. I want to crawl in a hole and bury myself in it and never come out. I am mad. Why? Yo, what just happened to my door? Is someone trying to break in? That'd be mad crazy. I just send this in. You guys have my hole break in. Man. Greetings, Red Scales. Please, make yourselves at home. Don't mind the sound of my ass cheeks as I walk across the room.